This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to more Miles Edgeworth Face Attorney Investigations, everybody. We are finally finishing Turnabout Reminiscence today. So, yeah, supposedly. We're on end part two, but <laughs> it's probably just as long as end part one. <laughs> Maybe. I actually don't remember how long this part is. When was only... the last time you played through the game? Uh, 2009. Oh. <laughs> ten years ago. Ten years. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I don't really remember all that well. Oh, but we're getting the presto music, so... That's Eureka! Hold it! Evidence. All I need to do is have some prints analyzed and we know straight away. Hmm. Be my guest. She sounds as though she has the room to maneuver. Which means, even if we were able to lift prints, they'd only show that it was someone else. But... Why that someone else was forced to open the window? <laughs> That's simple logic. Why don't I try presenting that piece of evidence? I have nothing to lose. <laughs> What's wrong? The scorched eyebrows lines on your forehead. They're all back. More importantly, are you going to be okay not running a fingerprint analysis? Yes, I'll be fine. Oh, well in that case, I'll just continue with my testimony, all right? Do you still look at the top screen? Yeah. All right, it, that that has, that's not the way it's supposed to look. But all right, it's slightly different it's, like it's not, coloration. I don't mind the colors. It's more just like it's, it's bigger. bigger, and you know Badder, how, and you stronger know how bad too. my eyes are. Uh, do you have proof that the, the the tape was the one? I thought I just proved that it was. Sure, you proved that the tape was there at the scene of the crime. However, that doesn't prove that it was actually used in said crime. Unfortunately for you, Miss You. The fact that the tape was there at the crime scene is in itself very important. How so? Hmm. <laughs> By the very existence of that tape at the crime scene, it proves the possibility that the when of the crime scene could have been fabricated. And that possibility alone renders all alibis and witness reports irrelevant. Basically, it means that we will need to re-examine every person's movements again. She's like, are you for real? <laughs> Whether the tape was used in the crime or not, that we can reevaluate afterwards. <sighs> Kern? That is the weirdest way. Like, <laughs> that's like one of the weirdest ways I've seen that spelled. <laughs> so, in conclusion, you're admitting that you can't prove that it was at this point. Frankly, I'm shocked at you. <laughs> well, that's not really news. You've been shocked at me for the whole thing. Even if you were shocked, that is of no concern to me. I do things my way. My way! <laughs> oh, my God. oh. I see that you're not laughing for a change. Because I'm shocked. Again, you being shocked is of no concern to me. Let us continue with the testimony. <laughs> All right. Well, let me say just one thing. You shouldn't go around accusing people. I'm a prosecutor. That's literally my job. Logic. <laughs> you should never use logic. Never? Logic? What's that? Full of holes? <laughs> well, I suppose it might be. Oh, admitting to your faults now, are we? At this point in time is what I mean meant to say. Should I take that to mean that you're just a sore loser? <laughs> no matter how full of holes my logic may be right now, if I plug them in one at a time, I will ultimately make my way to the truth. What a paradox. Taking care of not to fall into one of those holes before you fill it up. <laughs> Miles, you remember, don't you? About why a window in lobby number one was open? Yes, of course I do. And that's how I'll attack. I'll present the reason why the window had to be opened. But it's easy. She spilled her perfume. <laughs> I assume we can get through the perfume. Edgeworth doesn't mess up nearly mm. as much as Phoenix does. No, I'm sure you've seen this before, haven't you, Miss You? <laughs> Edgeworth, I never knew you were into wearing that kind of perfume. <laughs> it's not exactly what I'd recommend for boys, you know? But th this isn't mine! That's right, it's mine. And I received it from Detective Bad, you see. Miss You, you can pretend all you like, but we know at least this much for sure. This bottle of perfume was given to Detective Bad by you. <laughs> because it gets really strong really fast. So, what about the perfume? While you were in lobby number one, you made quite a big show of spilling some of this perfume. That's according to Detective Bad. What's up, homie? <laughs> oh, I know. 
You also knew that if you spilled it, he would naturally move to open a window. Objection. Objection. Come now. I've already told you that that's all just a big coincidence. After we opened the window in lobby number one, I just left it open, you know? So maybe it was just dumb luck that we heard a gunshot through the window. Objection! The timing of when you were going to spill the perfume is something you could control. And the most important fact about this case is when people were made to hear the shot. Furthermore, it would have been pointless if you didn't have an alibi for yourself at that time. You mean... Miss Yu, you were the one who called Detective Bad into lobby number one. When you saw him bring Detective Gumshoe into the hallway. Is that correct? All of today's premeditated events could only have been fought up by you, Miss Yu. Yeah. <laughs> you accuse me of murder on the fact that I spilled a little perfume. Well, allow me to say this much. I couldn't have killed Mr. Faraday. Would you care to testify as to why? Because I'm a lady. Boom. 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 I, because I, I just assumed a man had to have done that work. <laughs> to be fair, she is freaking skinny. Like, she could just, I feel she like she is. could just get yeah. thrown. <laughs> Look, I've had a lot of fun today, really. But I grow weary of this game of cat and mouse. Who's the cat and who's the mouse? Let's make this the last testimony and wrap up this absurd case once and for all. It'll be the last testimony, but it'll be like five amendments. Why couldn't it be me? Accusing someone of murder over a spilled bottle of perfume is a bit over the top. But I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. Ooh, shots fired. In any case, it simply could not have been me who killed Mr. Farden. After all, I don't even know where the knife that was used to kill him came from. But... Wasn't he killed by a gun? No. Uh, Macrell, I think, was killed Mac by the pistol. Macrell was killed by the pistol. Her testimony Handgun. is not flawless. Found him, yeah, it was in Faraday's hand okay. that it killed Rell. Well, and then he, Faraday the was killed by was the, like, the, I the knife. I don't know where the knife was. Like, <laughs> it was shown to be a knife, not as a key at first. <laughs> it's basically, like, Biff, is that alcohol I smell your breath? I wouldn't oh, know, no, sir, no. because I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, her testimony... It's flawless. Yes, but no matter what sort of trick she may try to pull, she won't escape me. And if I'm lacking in information, I'll just draw it out of her. Why it couldn't be me? <laughs> Spill ball perfumes all the time. Oh, sweet stir up the rug. <laughs> I think I already explained the significance of that earlier. You only confirmed that I did spill some perfume. But that's all that you would accuse me of murder based on a simple spell. Don't you dare complain when I sue you for the defamation. Def defamation. Defamation? What's that mean? Um, it's like slandering their character, kind of. Oh, okay. Learn something new every day. Don't you dare complain when I sue you for the defamation of the character. Def char <laughs> defamation of character. Of character. She's laughing at her own mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a klutz I am. an idiot. Do as you like, but as for me, I believe. <laughs> in Harvey Dent. You believe? <laughs> but as for me and Grandpa, we believe. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what is that from? Grandma got run over by the I did not game. watch that. It's the psalm, Marty. <laughs> I didn't listen to that. <laughs> but as for me and Waluigi, we steal watermelons from Farmer Ben's farm. Okay, that's, that's a the mad way about that. That's the only time I may have heard those lyrics. <laughs> I believe that you are the true culprit in this case. <laughs> oh my, you're enthusiastic. Of course, I should have guessed. But I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. I formally request that you desist in your attack against my mentor. Yes, or we'll sue you for def defamation. <laughs> All I'm doing is telling the truth. Well, maybe more like spreading gossip. That could be called a defamation of character. Yeah. <laughs> That's slander. Although, you're adamant denials are, shall we say, just adding fuel to the fire. Oh, yeah. For those who don't know, slander is when you do it verbally, and libel is when you do it in writing. Oh. Okay. How dare you! <laughs> say such a thing! Calm down, little girl. Don't let her get to you. Mm hmm. Aw, oh, why did you have to ruin my fun? <laughs> well, shall I continue? 
I mean, Von Karma almost definitely forged evidence. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> He's like, I, I'll tease people who get in my way. <laughs> even, even, like, Francisco was like, here's a picture of, like, the defendant looking not like Maya Faye. Obviously, I would never submit this to the court. But I just but did. But I just did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. It couldn't have been me that killed Kavarde. And why exactly could you not have killed him? <laughs> I was just about to testify to that. You're such an impatient man. <laughs> I'm not really into that, you know, it as work. Yeah, well, I'm not into ladies who laugh at hysterically at random moments, so. Oh, okay. Not to this level, where she's well, like- yeah, she's just like- She's like, <laughs> you have a normal face. <laughs> no, you know exactly what she's like. When, okay, again, another Avatar thing, sorry. When Azula's at the party, and it's just like, how do you like this party? <laughs> and then, like, she laughs super loudly for no reason. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Ah! I hate these Avatar references. Your preferences have no bearing on what is at hand. <laughs> Feeling a little uncontrollable, are we? Uncomfortable? <laughs> I can't read. Ah. Miss Yu, you will desist in this tomfoolery and return to your testimony. And Miles, if you're going to lose your cool, then I won't show you any mercy. Ahem. <clears throat> Sorry. Miss Yu, please continue with your testimony. Sure. As I was saying, I couldn't have possibly killed Faraday. How is she a defense lawyer? She's probably just like a- <laughs> Yeah. She really messes up words apparently today, too. <laughs> She's jet lag. When in doubt, no. the characters just have jet lag, that's why. That doesn't make any sense for her, though. At this rate, she will inevitably escape. But if she really was the one who killed Mr. Faraday, then she must have known about the existence of the knife. I'm sorry, Miss Yu. Maybe you weren't aware. However, the knife that was used to kill Mr. Faraday was taken from his evidence bag. Miles! What do you think you're doing? <laughs> I'm drawing the truth out of her. That's what I'm doing. Huh? But I don't recall a knife being presented at a trial earlier today. Well, I suppose that's because the evidence was something Mr. Faraday had yet to use. <laughs> so that's what you're trying to do? Look, why don't you cut it out with the lies? I've already figured you out. There was no knife inside Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. The only evidence he had yet to present, present was the key that the Yadagarasu had sent. And unless a key can magically turn into a knife, which you can, you really don't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> Did you really think you could trap me? <laughs> Come on, be honest. <laughs> I never intended to do such a thing. It was all just a misunderstanding on my part. In any case, I wonder if you might append what you just said to your testimony. Sure. <laughs> Why not? I'll... I'll, I'll even, even say it as many times as you'd like. <laughs> there was a key in his evidence bag, but you can't kill anyone with a simple key. Hold it! Miss Yu, I would just like to confirm something with you one more time. Oh? About what's going to happen to Detective Gumshoe after this? I don't need to ask you about that, because he isn't the killer. <laughs> Looks like the number of wrinkles of... Oh, the number. Yeah. I said the number. <laughs> Looks like the number of wrinkles on your forehead has increased yet again. <laughs> that issue aside, Miss Yu, I'd like to ask you about what was inside the bag. My poor mother, she's probably like, what in the world is Marty with these bags? You are sure it was the Yadagorasu's key, correct? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Which is why I'm completely baffled as to where that knife could have come from. I think I've just spotted the road to a perfect victory. Finally, it would appear that you have revealed your true identity, Miss Yu. Miles, her final statement. Yes, I know. All I have to do now is to present the evidence. But what is this ominous feeling that I can't shake? Bag. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Miss Yu, I wonder if you might take a look at this photo for me. This is a picture of the key the Yadagarasu sent the police. However, while it may look like a key at first glance, it, in fact, has the secret ability to transform into a knife. Which means that what was inside Mr. Faraday's bag was both the Yadagarasu's key and the murderous knife. You knew that the key was inside of Mr. Faraday's bag, did you not? Yes. 
Well, with the Yadagorasu's key alone, it's more than possible to kill Mr. Faraday. <laughs> Do you understand now? Just knowing the existence of the Yadagorasu's key. <laughs> Fun fact, she's putting on the makeup to hide the fact that she's sweating. Yeah. I still haven't a good look at it. Show it to me, or showing it to me from that far away. You could be lying for all I know. You would even now still feign ignorance. <laughs> I'm not feigning anything. But we can't have you just accusing me of a crime with false evidence now, can we? I mean, Mr. Von Karma. I've heard some very interesting rumors about him. Ugh! Are you mocking my papa? Don't you dare sully the good name of my mentor. Now take a good look. This piece of evidence is more than real. Wow. Who knew there was such a trick to this thing? Are you satisfied now? Us. But of course, you knew from the very beginning, didn't you? She can't, it's a prequel. <laughs> you knew she that a knife and us. the Yadagorasu's key are one and the same. Otherwise, someone like you, who isn't a member of the law enforcement, and who would never have been privy to this trick, would have never known about it to begin with. Furthermore, the something that the Yadagorasu sent the police. How did you have knowledge as to what it was? <laughs> Actually, I heard about it from Mr. Faraday. Just before he dragged Mr. Rell off, he told me. Oh, that's right, I almost forgot. He also told me about the key turning into the knife at that time. But he didn't tell me about how the key actually transforms. What are you saying? What you are saying is simply not possible. Oh, and why not? Because Mr. Faraday himself didn't know about the hidden knife within the key. For within these pages, he mentions nothing about a knife. <laughs> I'm not sure he would have written everything in his organizer, you know? Wouldn't something of this importance be better left to oral communication? Objection! Unfortunately, that is also impossible. Because Detective Bad didn't know about the knife aspect either. <sighs> what would have been highly classified information even within the police force? And is something that not even the lead detective on the case didn't know. Why would Mr. Faraday have felt the need to share such information with the opposition? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he wouldn't have much of a reason to... <laughs> Looks like I gave a pretty lame excuse, huh? <laughs> How can you laugh at a time like this? She's probably just realized the flaw in her logic and is actually in a panic over it. But that's not something we need to concern ourselves with. Hmm... I suppose you're right. Miss Yu, I'd like to state that I also know how you know the real nature of this knife. <laughs> Do you know? Well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and show me? Oh, I will, and I'll wipe that smile off your face by the time we're through. This is it. The moment of truth. The secret behind the Yadagorasu's key. Only one person would have had knowledge of it from the get-go. What? Who would know that from the start that the Yadagrasu's key could change into a knife? Oh, the creepy dude. Hey, Bimini coaching you me? Yeah, the creepy dude. That would be this person. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the best laugh I've had all day. Now are we ready to call it a day yet? Wait a second! I was mistaken. This is it, the true moment of truth. <laughs> okay, well... No, it's the Yadagrasu <laughs> itself. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize we had him as a profile! There's only one person who would have known about that dual nature of the key. <laughs> and that is? And that is the person who sent the Yadagorasu's key to the police. That is to say, the Yadagorasu herself. Are you saying that this lawyer is the great thief Yadagorasu? Miss Yu? You used Mr. Rell to lure Mr. Farday into a trap, didn't you? You, who professed to bear a grudge against criminals, why? Why do something like Hold this? Up. If she's the thief, though, then how is she a lawyer as well? I mean, I get, like, the it's fighting secret. evil by moonlight, living love by daylight type thing, but... <laughs> what? How does that work? That was a good laugh. Who <laughs> <laughs> would have thought that you 
A stupid rookie prosecutor would see for me. You're sending the biggest chill down my spine right now, Edgeworth. This feeling of thrill is even greater than what I sneak into some place. You! You! You killed Faraday! Why? Answer me, Callisto you! Haha! <laughs> Callisto you. Huh. That's not my real name. Because my real identity is, yes, the great thief Yadagarasu. Let me tell you something, Edgeworth. Mr. Faraday was one difficult man to deal with. For you see, he had discovered my true identity. Which is why I had to erase him from the world of law. I made Rel an offer, an acquittal, for a little favor in return. All he had to do was accuse Mr. Faraday of being the Yadagarasu in court. But once we entered the recess, Rel was dragged off by Mr. Faraday, which threw my plan into a complete mess. I chased after them and eavesdropped on them through a crack in the door. That Rel caves to only two things, money and authority, just as all thugs do. I feared my plan was going to be ruined if Mr. Faraday held on to Rel any longer. Plus, if I had let them continue on the way they were, I would have been found out. That's why I had no choice. I had to kill them both! But didn't you say that you despised criminals? <laughs> but do I really? You... Have you forgotten about the KG-8 incident, too? Maybe. What sort of woman would- so then, it was your- was it your plan to kill Mr. Faraday with the very evidence that you sent? <laughs> well, I had a good idea of what Mr. Faraday was going to do. I anticipated that Mr. Faraday was going to prove that Rao wasn't the right, real Yadagarasu. By using this Yadagarasu's key as evidence, and that he would bring it with him. Which is why I thought to use the knife portion. With a weapon as well disguised as this, no one would be the wiser. Because who in their right mind would think something like this could be a weapon? I casually entered lobby number two on the pretext that I had to talk with Mr. Faraday. And in order to get in with him, I pretended to be worried about something. He then let me hold the Yadagarasu's key. Just like that. He never noticed that I changed the key into a knife inside that plastic bag. He didn't even have a chance to take note of the knife that took his life. How could you kill him? I knew him for a long time, you know? At the very least, I thought to give him a quick and painless death. But if you killed Mr. Farday first, there was no need for you to kill Mr. Rell as well. I believe I mentioned why we were placing uh, Detective Gumshoe under arrest. Something about having accidentally created an eyewitness. And how that led the killer to thinking about setting them up as, thought they as though they killed each other. Then the trick with the surveillance tape? Yes. I hadn't planned to actually use a gun. The risk was too high that I'd be caught. However, that's when I remembered the existence of that sort of surveillance tape. She's good thinking on the fly. I mean, clearly she must have gone to law school, because <laughs> she can work as a lawyer, so she's smart. Phoenix she's didn't go wise. to law school. <laughs> yes, he did. He went to art school for undergrad, but he had to have gone to law school after. Okay, three years after the case where Mia have defended him, he was a lawyer. So either he was, like, a prodigy in law school, which, given Phoenix's track record, I don't think that's really true. Law school only takes three years to complete, though. I thought law school took, like, six years. No. Oh. I think you'd graduate in three years, because that's why oh, okay. it's his first case. I think it perfectly matches up. All right. Which is why I had Rel help me set up the crime scene. And after all was said and done, I rewarded him for all his hard work with a bullet. You! You're a defense attorney, aren't you? How could you... How could you betray a client? <laughs> client, if you want to talk about who was a client of whose first, it was me. I was the client in the murder of the Kodopian embassy staff member dead man. You... you ordered a hit job. <laughs> you still haven't figured it out, Mr. Bad. I had dead man killed because he was about to give away information about the smuggling ring. Now, who exactly do you think would benefit from such an assassination? It, it can't be... you... your... That's right. I'm a member of the smuggling ring. How could this... 
You don't mean you're working with Manny Coaching too, do you? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Guess you'll never know. The Yadagarasu claims to be noble, but you're just another cold blooded murderer! <laughs> That's right, little girl. That Yadagarasu's just another killer! Be quiet, you! Yadagarasu! You can run from the law, but you'll never escape it. So just humbly accept the judgment of this court. <laughs> hey, Edgeworth. Did you know? Yadagarasu has three legs. Do you know why that is? <laughs> no? Well, let me tell you. It means that the Yadagarasu has more than one razor-sharp way to do her work. Yeah, I kind of expected that, to be honest. You really are too naive, Edgeworth. You even handed the Yadagarasu's key right to me without a second thought. Everything may not have gone according to plan, but I'll still gladly take it! You mean... the key was your real target? Even after I gave you such a great advice, didn't I tell you to always keep a good eye on a criminal? Or you may regret it with co what comes of your negligence. You two, get down! <laughs> My body, I can't move. Hey, mister, to your right! You! Oh, at least you didn't go and shoot the child. Are you alright, Franziska? Uh, I'm perfectly fine, Miles. Her voice is shaking, but it looks like she's unharmed. Hmm? Where did Kay go? That's a gunshot. Come on, Kay. I know you were alive, but like, I hope you didn't sustain injury. September 10th, 7 p.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Well, the judge is okay. Sorry, but it looks like she got away. I called the precinct. They should have a perimeter set up soon. Detective Bad, are you alright? I heard a gunshot. I'm okay. Just got another hole in my jacket. He may say he's fine, but he looks quite shaken. But more importantly, boy. I mean, Mr. Edgeworth, Miss Von Karma. Are you too hurt? Uh, I... I'm absolutely fine. I'm also alright. Thanks to Kay. Speaking of Kay, where is she? Hmm, I don't know. She just sort of, sort of disappeared. Hmm. I'll, maybe, go, I'll go look for her after I enjoy this nice corn dog. <laughs> maybe, maybe um, the real Yadagorasu kidnapped her and then she's like, I'm the Yadagorasu, you gotta deal with it! <laughs> <laughs> That's your theory? <laughs> maybe. Oh, and hey, Detective Gumshoe. Y yes, sir! Uh, Detective Bad, sir! I'm sorry I doubted you. Don't worry, sir! It's not your fault! I... Well, I lied to you guys, too, after all. I heard about what happened from Kay. Lying while giving testimony is still unforgivable. <laughs> but in this case, you were protecting Kay and her feelings. Looks like you just might have what it takes to be a real detective. Don't you ever lose that detective spirit, okay? Y you got it, Pops! Pops? Watched one too many detective dramas recently, have we? Way to single-handedly destroy the cheery atmosphere with one snarky comment. I should get back to the investigation. I swear, I'll catch you if it's the last thing I do. And it's the last thing he does. Be careful, Detective Bad, and take care. Thanks. Well, I'm off. Maybe we'll run into each other again someday. Detective Bat is my favorite character from this case. <laughs> really? Yeah, I love him. Um, so, uh, thanks a bunch, pal. You're the best. You really did find out the truth behind everything. Yes, well, I'm glad we solved everything before you were taken to prison. The judge is sad. I can't believe how much trouble I caused you with my testimony, Detective Gumshoe. Uh, it was no problem, really. <laughs> I mean, I lied too, so I didn't help anything. It's really not your fault, Your Honor. 
Well, even if we didn't have his honor's testimony, I think that the lawyer, or I think that lawyer would have found another way to get you convicted on her behalf. Yeah, I can't believe I was about to get fired during my first week as a detective. <laughs> well, so long as you're not fired, you should work hard, give all that you have, and perform your duties well. Oh, and one more thing. Kay left a present for you with me. She did? Ooh, what is it? What was it that Kay left for me? The proof of their friendship? Oh. That, that's easy. It was the pistol! <laughs> no! I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, but are you sure it's okay for me to take it? <laughs> well, wait, that's not what I meant to give you. Please return it at once. Miles, you really not that bright, are you? Gah! Oh, I made a simple mistake, Francisca. Oh, it's okay. It's the thought that counts anyway. Hey, speaking of Kay... It's... It's a courthouse special Swiss roll! C can I really have it? Yes, it's a present meant for you, after all. Thanks a bunch! You have no idea how happy this makes me, pal! I'm gonna eat this right now! Wasn't she saving that for her dad? No, she said was saving it for Gumshoe. Oh. Sure, go ahead. Or she was, but then she's like, I'll give it to Gumshoe instead, now that dad's yeah. dead. Yeah. The Swiss rolls Detective Gumshoe and Kay bought together. While the one Kay saved never reached her father. It would appear that her sentiments have touched the heart of this detective. He's so happy, it's as, it's as though he's having a welcome back celebration of his own. Well, I was asked by Kay to give it to him. Whoop! That was good, pal. I can't believe I got to eat two of these delicious things in one day. It's like I'm in Swiss roll paradise or something. I've got to thank Kay myself. Hey, wait, where is she? He only noticed just now. Was his mind not present when we discussed her earlier? Detective Bad left to go search for her earlier. Maybe you should go join him. Yeah, you betcha, pal. I'm gonna go help him. Oh, but first... You know what, pal? Actually, I guess I shouldn't be so rude to you anymore, huh? I'm gonna stick right by your side from now on, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Oh, boy. I sense nothing but a most troublesome relationship from that ominous statement. I love this photo. <laughs> it does look like it's right out of Fire Emblem. <laughs> it does. It looks like that one with, um... Is it Kent and... Where Kent's doing the face palm. Yeah, Kent's doing the face palm. He's like, hey, Florida. Florida's like, ugh. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's Francisca! I thought yeah. that was... Sorry. We should go home too, Miles. We have to hurry and report what happened to Papa. All right, I'll get on the... Agreed. I'm afraid we must be going now, Detective. We have a tractor waiting for us. Yep. Roger, sir. And don't you worry. I'll investigate the next case we're on real well. I'll, um, be counting on you. The scent of trouble is definitely in the air. And the next case they worked on was the Mia Fey Pastel case. Uh-huh. Thus, like a bad dream, my first outing at court came to a disturbing end. A few months later, I was finally able to properly stand in court as a prosecutor. But the detective in charge of the investigation was, as I dreaded, Detective Gumshoe. After that, he became my direct subordinate. I have tried, but words fail to describe the immeasurable suffering he has caused me. <laughs> but I suppose that's just how things are. As for the little girl who suddenly disappeared, she's now... So. so, do you remember now? Yes. I remember everything. Kay, it's been a while. Kay, you sure grew up a lot. Of course, but thank goodness. I thought you two had totally forgotten about me. You know, I was really worried about you after all that. Where have you been all this time? <laughs> Gummy, I didn't know you cared. After my father died, I went to go live with my mother's relatives. They lived really far away, so I wasn't able to, really able to come back here all that much. Oh, is that what happened? Well, I'm just glad you're alright. <laughs> so, does it all make sense now? You betcha it does. Oh, you know what? I was going through my father's bookshelves recently and... Actually, there are still a number of things that I don't- that don't make sense, Kay. Huh? First of all, why did you come all this way here to see me? And second, why are you calling yourself the Yadagarasu? The Yadagarasu is Callisto Yu, the woman who killed your father. No, you're wrong. 
The real Yadagarasu is my father! M Mr. Faraday was the Yadagarasu? Like I said, I was going through my father's bookshelves recently. And I found a secret diary hidden among his books. I have no regrets in choosing to walk the path of the Yadagarasu. That was written in his diary, and that's how I know for sure. But that's... that's impossible! What's with the look? You don't believe me? It wasn't just the expression on my face. I clearly said it was impossible just now. Alright then. How do you explain this? It's a way of disarming any security system of the user's choosing. Yup! That's Little Thief! Truth be told, this is the Yadagarasu's greatest secret. And this little gizmo was used by my father. Wow! Mr. Faraday wasn't just a great prosecutor, he was a really a great thief, huh? Yeah, my father worked really hard to steal the truth. But he was killed, and the Yadagarasu is no more. But despite that, the Yadagarasu's been spotted again recently! Someone other than you? Here, Mr. Edgeworth. Take a look at this article. We saw this in the first case. Yeah. The Yadagarasu sent the embassy a calling card? Yeah, meaning this person's a fake. I'm almost certain that Callisto you lady's behind this. Because the real Yadagarasu would never send something like a gaudy card out. But the Yadagarasu did send a white card along with anything to be publicized. That's what Detective Bad told me seven years ago, if memory serves. Well, as soon as I heard the news, I got all wound up and I knew I couldn't just let it go. So I searched you out. So that I could obtain the truth behind the Yadagarasu. Because if anyone can help me find it, I figured it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. So you're saying that I have your father's and Miss Yu's identities backwards? Yeah, because the real Yadagarasu is noble to the end. And I want to revive that, the real noble Yadagarasu. I don't. My father will never be able to rest in peace. Kay. Kay, you're so honorable. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'll always be here to cheer you on, pal. Even if you are honorable, a thief is a thief. And if you are plotting to commit a crime, then I'm afraid I can't be complicit. Mr. Edgeworth? Ugh. You guys are not making it easy for me. Who am I supposed to support now? Mr. Edgeworth. What I want from you is not to steal something. What I want is the arrest of that evil woman. That evil woman? You mean Callisto Yu? I think it's too hard for me to catch her all by myself. But I thought that since you were able to expose her for who she is, that maybe... Please, Mr. Edgeworth, won't you help me? Come to think of it, I do believe I owe you. Huh? Owe me for what? When Miss Yu made her escape, it was you who saved my life. Furthermore, you helped me with the investigation today. I am not so rude as to leave favors unrepaid. Th then you mean? Yes. That case has been weighing down on my soul ever since that fateful day. Perhaps the time has come to settle things once and for all. If you don't intend to sully your hands in a crime, then I believe I can help you. Mr. Edgeworth, thank you! Yay, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Isn't that great, Kay? Yeah! It sure is, Gummy. Even though he had com been completely forgotten about her until just now. Ugh, what is with their chummy relationship? The great thief, Yadagarasu. After all that time, the true identity of the thief sank back into the darkness. Burn Faraday, Callisto Yu, and Kay Faraday. The phantasmagorically changing identity of the great thief, Yadagarasu and the Yadagarasu's real goal. It would all come to light the day after I made that promise to Kay. The end. The end. So that's the fifth? That was the fourth case. But that will be the fifth? Yep, this is the fifth case. Brand new episode has been added, Turnabout Ablaze. It's just constant gunfights. <laughs> Everywhere. You walk in, you use like, ba-bam! <laughs> ba-bam, yeah, pretty ba -bam. much. So that's Turnabout Reminiscence, so what did you think of that case? Um, uh, I like, I liked it. I thought it was cool. Turnabout <laughs> Reminiscence. I think the main thing is just, like, the beginning, it started so good. And mm -hmm. then, like, 
Do you wish Manfred had been in it more? Yeah, that's some of it. It needed. It needed I'm kind of glad he more, wasn't because my voice yeah, doesn't kill me. It needed a little bit more humor, and I think it was one of those where if they had thrown that part into another case, kind of like for Apollo Justice when they had like the here's the fourth case and then here's the fourth case in the computer. <laughs> like, <laughs> like if they had shortened this, not that I necessarily would have wanted that, but I think it would have flowed better with the case. Because in my brain, I have completely forgot about what was even happening when we finally were like, oh, it's Kay. I remember you from seven years ago. I'm like, wait, what were we doing in this case? <laughs> in the th third case? In the third case. Was that the one where we were... That was when we were in uh, Gatewater Land, Badger no, Land. No, no, no. Yeah, we yeah like, that. Yeah, we're uh, Ernest Amato won Butt of the Year Award. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for buying a haunted house. But see, I was like, how evidence. are we going to... In my brain, I thought that had already been solved. So it's like, oh... Okay, mm -hmm. I guess we're still kind of on that. And then, oh, that was a great case. You like the airplane case. That's weird. I, I like don't the, like the airplane case. I like case. the airplane case I also don't like basketball boy case. A basketball boy case is the first case. It's whatever. Airline case was like... Some of it is... It had such a weird cast of characters, and I love that. And I liked the tricks that they pulled at the end to, to make you see who is the real person. <laughs> yes, it's bed sheets. <laughs> yes, it's bed sheets. No, seriously. Yep. But that was, and I like narcoleptic... Cammy meal. Anyways, mm -hmm. turn about a blaze. So it's a girl with a key going through her head with blonde or with a long hair. So it's probably and a very Callisto. short skirt. It's probably Callisto. You, no, yes, maybe. Mm. You serious? Are you no. for real? No. Are, are Kay, you for real? Kay doesn't wear her hair down. It's she's got a giant ponytail. Yeah, that doesn't mean that her hair would flow like that. Yeah, it does. You do not know how ponytails work. You don't know how Kay's ponytail works. Maybe. It's not, it's like a huge, really bushy ponytail but, but, uh, that can blow like that. And she has a key through her hair. Anyways. Okay. Next time we're going to turn about a blaze. That is quite the final case. Quite Very... the final case. Yes. Like, there's going to be guns in it. There's going to be ba bangs. There's going to be... Perhaps. Um, I mean, it's a very long case. There are some pretty cool parts, but it's also like, I'm like, this case could literally be half the length. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you fought, if you fought Rise from the Ashes, it was not unnecessarily long. Oh, yeah. man. But, but there is, are still some really good parts to this case, so it will be fun. It will be fun. And we might get to play some So, look forward to that. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.